Hi everybody, it is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are getting into topic 2.1 on cell structure and function. So therefore we are starting our second unit in the class and that is all about cells. We have two of models of them right here. Uh, we have an animal cell on the left side and a plant cell on the right side. Now, do real cells actually look like this? No, they do not because real cells are specialized and these cells are not really specialized in any way, shape or form. We're gonna talk about what specialization means later in the class. Okay, but uh, these are good models for us for which to study the, uh, well, the parts of the cell. So we're going to be taking a tour of the cell today. Are we going to be covering every single structure within the cell? No, we're not. Um, but we are going to be covering all of the ones that are part of topic 2.1 in the updated 2025-2026 AP Biology curriculum. Um, so a lot of the structures that you're going to see on that uh, little diagram right here, this model right here, we're going to be covering, but not all of them. Um, so I'm going to be listing them out here. Okay, we're going to cover a lot more of them as we progress through the unit and consequently through the curriculum, but uh, nonetheless, here they are for this topic. We're going to start with ribosomes, then we're going to talk about the endomembrane system, which includes the endoplasmic reticulum, both the smooth and the rough. We're going to talk about the Golgi complex, lysosomes, vacuoles. Uh, we're going to talk about where transport vesicles come in. We're going to briefly discuss the nuclear membrane. But l in later topics, we're going to get into the specifics of the plasma membrane and not just membranes in general, um, but especially the plasma membrane later in this unit. So we won't spend too much time on it here, but we'll talk about it just a little bit. And then we're going to get into mitochondria, lysosomes, and chloroplast um, later at the end of the video. So let's begin with the thing that literally all living things have, which are ribosomes. Um, they're little tiny structures in comparison to a lot of the other things that we're going to see on here. So if you see little dots speckled throughout a, a cell diagram, those are probably going to be ribosomes. And those are made of R RNA, that little R stands for ribosomal RNA, and they're made of proteins. Um, ribosome's job is to produce proteins based on mRNA sequences. So the nucleus sends out some mRNA to the ribosomes and says, hey, put together these amino acids based on this sequence of mRNA. That's what's called translation. We're going to get into quite a few details about that in, uh, in unit six when we talk about translation. Um, but those are ribosomes, right? And all living things have them, all right? That includes prokaryotic cells, which are cells that do not not have a nucleus or membrane bound organelles and eukaryotes, which are cells that do. Okay. So we, as eukaryotes also have ribosomes in our cells and you could find ribosomes in bacteria. You could find them in, uh, amoeba. You could find them in carrier pigeons. I don't know in everything. Okay. Um, and it demonstrates common ancestry, which means that like all living things came from descended from one other main living thing you know, three and a half billion years ago. And uh, yeah, all life on earth is related. We're gonna talk about that in unit seven. And this is a piece of evidence that shows that, all right, every single living thing has ribosomes. Um, and once again, it is made of some RNA and it's made of some proteins. And here's a, a little preview of what translation looks like. mRNA is gonna slide through this ribosome. It's gonna put together amino acids um, in, in the particular order. And remember the order of amino acids determines its structure and function of the protein. All right, but uh, let's get into some of the bigger stuff here, literally bigger stuff. Um, and this is what you're going to find in eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are cells, once again, that have membrane bound organelles. They have internal membranes. So thus we have endomembrane system. Endo means within. Um, and it is a collection of membrane bound cell parts that modifies packages and transports cellular products in vesicles. Okay, so let's uh, break this down here. <laughs> break it down. We're going to talk about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have several components here that we're going to be chatting about that are all part of what's called the endomembrane system. All right, you have this system of membranes right here. It's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. You have the Golgi apparatus and you have the nuclear envelope, all right? This whole thing is the nucleus um, and the nuclear envelope is the membrane that's surrounding the nuclear, or excuse me, surrounding the nucleus, okay? And it's continuous with this endoplasmic reticulum over here, which is a mouthful, but I'll talk about that in a second, okay? Um, and basically what this whole system is going to do is they're going to make cellular products, particularly polysaccharides, lipids and proteins, all right? Um, it's going to make those products and then it's going to store them in these little membrane bubbles called vesicles over here. So you can see secretory vesicles down here. Um, they're going, and those bubbles are made of, of plasma membrane. They're made of membranes and they can be shipped around the cell um, to other parts of the cell that, uh, that where they're needed, or they can be even be shipped out of the cell and sent to other cells um, because, you know, cells have to work together um, to form multicellular organisms. 
Okay, so uh, that's what vesicles are, all right? And all of these are going to be forming, uh, well, they're going to be making products, all right? And then they're going to be shipping them out and sending them where they need to go via vesicles, all right? And it requires a whole lot of organelles to do that. So we're going to start with the endoplasmic reticulum, a.k.a. the ER, endo means endo, or well, within, plasmic means within the cytoplasm. And reticulum is kind of like just a complex system. Hey, it's, so it's a system of membranes that help cells maintain shape, and they sip, ship cellular products to other parts of the cell. Okay, so each of these two parts of the endoplasmic reticulum produce different things, right? So this orange section over here, you can kind of see them um, as little tubes. Sometimes they're not really pictured as tubes like that. They're more pictured like this, except without these ribosomes in them. Um, but the job of the smoothie are is to de toxify the cell, so break down any um, toxic substances that might be in there. And its job is to synthesize lipids, right? So if a cell has to produce lipids, say, for its membrane, or if it has to produce some kind of sterol, whatever, um, that's going to be done in the smooth ER, all right? And it's going to uh, produce those lipids and then try to send them where they need to go, okay? Um, and then that's opposed to the rough ER. And why is it called rough? Well, it's because it's embedded with these ribosomes over here. It looks like it would be bumpy to the touch um, if you touched it. So that's why it's called the rough ER. Um, and it's called, well, the smooth is called smooth because it doesn't have the ribosomes in it. But anyway, the rough ER um, separates, or what the word is, compartmentalizes cell parts, and it helps with protein synthesis. Okay, so it's got those ribosomes in it that are going to be helping produce proteins, and then it's got uh, it's got these ribosomes embedded into the membrane, right? So what it can do, what membranes, we're going to talk about them quite a bit later on, what they can do is they can reform and form new shapes and that kind of stuff. Uh, they can, you know, kind of branch off and break off a little bit and still keep the membrane intact. Um, so these ribosomes are going to be producing proteins, and then they're going to be put into a vesicle, a little piece of that membrane over there that can be shipped around the cell. Um, and that's what's really cool about the rough ER. But the other thing that we can talk about the rough ER doing is it helps compartmentalize the cell. It separates things out into groups, right? So compartmentalization is a big deal when it comes to eukaryotic cells. Um, we're going to talk about this towards the end of the unit, but compartmentalization means that, hey, there's one sec section of this cell that, that does this job. There's one section that does this job. There's one section that does this job, and they're all separate separated out from one, one another by membrane. So think of it like, I don't know, I'm in a school building right now, right? This room is for biology. Across the hall is for chemistry. Uh, down the hall is for like forensics and that kind of stuff, right? Um, they're each, and they're all separated out by walls, right? So a school is highly compartmentalized, right? Or you could even think of this like a factory or an office or whatever. Different jobs get done in different compartments, right? Um, and that's how uh, that's how the main concept behind behind compartmentalization, um, and the rough ER helps to do that. But we'll talk about that more when we get to topic two point ten, I believe. Um, so here's another structure in the endomembrane system. It's called the Golgi complex. You might also see it being called the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus or just the Golgi. Um, but anyway, it's a flattened membrane sacs, a uh, system of flattened membrane sacs that correctly fold and modify newly cellular products, newly made cellular products, excuse me. All right, so whatever proteins or lipids the rough ER tends to make, all right, it usually sends them first to the Golgi complex. And then the Golgi complex is another system of membranes here that is going to package them, fold, correctly fold the proteins, and then send them out into the right direction, right? So if it's got to go out to another cell or it's got, got to go to another part of the cell. Um, the Golgi apparatus is going to make some chemical reactions happen to, uh, to make sure that those products go to the right places. So it's the shipping center of the cell. Uh, the AP Biology curriculum kind of recommends you not using like analogies to talk about the parts of the cell and what do they what they do. Um, but I will hear just a little bit because you know it, it's the shipping center. It get, receives you know products and then sends them out where they need to go. Um, that's essentially what it does at its base level here. All right, now we're getting out of the membrane, uh, endomembrane system, and we're talking about everybody's favorite organelle, the one that you take away from the class. Oh, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Here it is, right? Is the powerhouse of the cell. Why do we call it that? Well, because it synthesizes ATP. Um, this whole thing that it does is called cellular respiration, and we're going to spend a whole lot of time on that in Unit 3. We're going to get into the specifics of those three different stages of cellular respiration, why they're super important, and what they do. But the point is that it makes ATP. It doesn't produce, like, energy, energy, um, as in, like, you know, turning on the lights or, like, I don't know, that kind of stuff. It produces ATP, which is the chemical that cells use to access energy from 
all right? The, they break a bond within ATP to access energy. So it's what we call the cellular energy currency. It makes ATP, which ATP powers all the processes of the cell. That's what I'm trying to get at here. That's It's still the powerhouse of the cell. Just remember that. Now, I mean, you got to know a little bit more, but still. Um, anyway, the, the, a little bit about the structure of the mitochondrion is going to become important later on, um, especially when we start talking about uh, cellular respiration. All right, something notable about the mitochondrion is that, hang on, do I have the right one selected? There we go. Um, is that it has two membranes, right? It has an inner membrane and an outer membrane. The outer membrane is very, very smooth, okay? And it kind of forms within the inside and the outside of the mitochondrion. And then the inner membrane is highly folded or convoluted, all right? I spoke earlier about cellular respiration having three different uh, three different processes within it, right? Or, yeah, I guess three different processes within it. And those happen in different parts of the cell and different parts of the mitochondrion. And they need to be separated out from one another for maximum efficiency. So hence compartmentalization again. Um, this outer membrane just kind of contains the contents of the mitochondria and keeps everything else out and controls what comes in and out. And then this inner membrane, uh, there's a whole lot of reactions that happen along that membrane. And the more membrane you have, the more surface area you have. And the more surface area you have, the more efficient cellular processes are going to be. Um, so we're going to talk about the point of surface area here in our next topic video. But keep in mind that this is highly folded because of a high surface area. All right. And the mitochondrion's overall job is to produce ATP. Um, a lysosome is a membrane enclosed sac that contains hydroly hydrolytic enzymes. It hydrolyzes, remember that means to break down uh, materials. Okay, so um, something gets sent to the lysosome. It gets, it's usually like a, maybe it might be a waste product or it might be something that needs to be just broken down into its tiny pieces uh, for the cell. That's what the lysosome does. It kind of cleans up a little bit. Um, and in fact, it's so good at breaking stuff down that when the cell has to die, and we're going to talk about circumstances under which cells have to die in unit four. Um, it has to go through something called apoptosis, right? And uh, apoptosis is when a cell will self-destructs. It gets a signal um, to self-destruct, and it, uh, well, does so. And uh, what's going to happen is that uh, a lot of the cellular materials, almost all the cellular materials, are going to be broken down by the enzymes within the lysosome. So the lysosome kind of goes crazy when the cell just, you know, has to die. Um, so yeah, there you go. And that's called apoptosis. We're going to come back to that in unit four. I'm going to say, I'm saying that a lot today. Like, oh, we're going to see this in unit, whatever. Like, mm, yeah, here you go. Um, all right, let's go to the end of get into vacuoles, a membrane-bound sac that restores materials, okay? So it's kind of similar to a, uh, a lysosome, except instead of breaking stuff down, it's going to store stuff, all right? It's a, it's a storage unit for, uh, for the cell, all right? In plant cells, you have what's called a central vacuole. So here's my plant cell right up here. The central vacuole is this big bubble right in the middle. Um, it's storing a whole lot of water, and it kind of stores some nutrients. In 2.7, we're going to be talking about something called osmoregulation, and we're going to talk about tonicity. Um, as well. And what did I just say? Well, it's uh, basically controlling how much water the cell is going to intake and how much water the cell is going to output and control uh, control wh whether water comes in or out of the cell. Now, plants always need to have water coming in, all right? They need an extra big amount of, or extra high amounts of water, extra big, um, in the, uh, in the central vacuole so that this bubble here, this central vacuole has a lot of water in it and it exerts pressure on the cell wall. All right, I did not mean to make that extra little swirl there. All right, but it exerts pressure on the cell wall. Okay, and that's what's called turgor pressure. All right, um, so the central vacuole is responsible for taking an, a ton of water to exert pressure on the, the cell walls and make sure the plant cell stays rigid and thereby the plant stays rigid. All right, plants, how are they able to stand up without bones or anything like that, or connective tissues? Well, turgor pressure. Again, we'll get to that in unit seven, or excuse me, topic 2.7. And then the animal cells, they have, uh, well, we have sent vacuoles as well. We don't have a central vacuole. Um, we have smaller vacuoles kind of spread out throughout the cell, and those are for storage as well. All right, but uh, plant cells have one large central vacuole. A couple more structures to talk about. Plant cells have these, and animal cells do not. Why? Because, well, animals can't uh, photosynthesize. We cannot take sunlight energy and put it into chemical bonds like plants and some algae can. Um, so hence these plants and some algae have what's called a chloroplast. Once again, a double membrane organelle, very similar to the mitochondrion. We're going to come back to that later. Uh, similar to the mitochondrion. And it's got two sets of membranes here. One is around these discs over here, which are called thylakoids. Hey, okay? and then it's got a smooth outer membrane 
once again as well. All right, and the outer membrane, you know, controls what comes in and out of the chloroplast. And then the inner membranes, this is where reactions happen that we're going to talk about at length in topic 3.4 when we get into uh, into photosynthesis. All right, but for right now, this is the, the site of photosynthesis. This is where a uh, plant cell is able to absorb light energy and store it into chemical bonds to make uh, to make sugars, to make glucose, um, carbohydrates. So here we are. So uh, those are chloroplasts. Again, going to come back in a big, big way. I'm laying the groundwork for a lot of like, oh, you're going to see this later on. All right. So uh, let's review some of the structures that we saw instead of like the recap where I just kind of put the text on there. Let's just uh, identify some stuff on the diagrams here. All right. Obviously, I don't have everything flagged on here, but, um, you know, it's going to be important to know this stuff um, that I talked about in this video. All right. But it's, you know, there's going to, there might be more later on. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, let's start at the bottom left corner over here. We have a system of membranes. All right. Over here, there's a, there's a part with a bunch of ribosomes in it. And then there's a part with a, not a whole lot of ribosomes in it. And it's continuous with the nucleus over here. All right. Which is the central part of the cell. Um, anybody know what this is? If, and when, by the way, you can pause this at any time if you want to try and quiz yourself, try to identify what these structures are. But here we go. We are looking at the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, let's go clockwise here. This structure over here, it's uh, pink sometimes in other diagrams. It's like red, um, but it's got a highly folded inner membrane and a smooth outer membrane. It is the mitochondrion. It's the site of ATP synthesis. Okay. And then this green structure over here, it's got a set of inner membranes around these discs over here, and then a smooth outer membrane. It's something plant cells have that animal cells do not. It is a chloroplast. Um, this structure over here is a uh, membrane bound sac that contains a whole lot of hydrolytic enzymes that are going to break stuff down. That is what's called a lysosome. Okay. This big compartment in the middle. I'm not really sure what these little diamond thingies are. Maybe, it's, I don't know, just artistic flair or something like that. Uh, but it has a whole lot of water in it. It stores nutrients, all right, and exerts turgor pressure. Um, pressure on the plant cell wall is called the central vacuole. All right, this system mem membranes over here that kind of looks like a Wi-Fi symbol. Um, its job is to ship products where they need to go. There's usually sent from the endoplasmic reticulum over here, and then this ships them out to where they got to go. That is the Golgi complex. And then last but not least, this central structure over here. Uh, we didn't talk about it that much, but it has a membrane that's continuous. It's the endoplasmic reticulum, and it stores the cell's DNA. That is the nucleus, all right? And once again, that membrane that the nucleus or uh, that surrounds the nucleus is called the nuclear envelope, okay? Nuclear envelope or envelope. I'm not really sure what it is. I've heard envelope before. But anyway, um, let's do another one. Now we got an animal cell. All right, things are slightly in different orders here. All right, we have our shipping center over here, flattened membranes um, that are going to receive things from this part of the cell. That is the Golgi complex once again. All right, we have uh, this powerhouse of the cell over here. Just gave it away. It's got an inner membrane that's folded up. Uh, outer membrane that's nice and smooth. That is the mitochondrion. All right, I tried to make a bracket here. I just freehanded it. Um, these dots over here, these dots that are speckled throughout the, uh, the cytoplasm, which is the fluid that fills up cell in the cell, the fluid that fills up a cell. Um, they're responsible for making proteins. Those are called ribosomes. And just to be clear here, plant cells also have ribosomes. I just didn't put it in the last diagram. Whoops. Ah, oh, darn it. Okay. Pop, 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 pop. There we go. Okay. Um, this structure over here is responsible for storage of water and other materials. It's not as big as the one in the plant cell. It is a vacuole. All right. This yellow structure over here is another membrane that contains a whole bunch of enzymes to break stuff down. That is a lysosome. Okay. And then in the very middle of the cell, we have the main structure that you can see most often when you're looking at actual cells under the microscope. Um, well, eukaryotic cells, you're going to see the nucleus. All right, and then this system of membranes here that's kind of attached to the outside of the nucleus, the nuclear envelope. This is, once again, the endoplasmic reticulum. All right, let me know if you have any questions. We're going to get into cell size and why that's important in our next topic, but this is a big one. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.